Hello, everybody. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Scott. Hi, Scott. Your name is? Uh, Nathan. Nathan. Nice to meet you, Nathan. Uh, we uh, both work together, uh, have worked together for a number of years. Um, we uh, work on a, a little toolkit called uh, Eventide that is uh, uh, a toolkit for building event uh, sourced autonomous services or microservices, if you will. You can find out more information about that at Eventide Project. Uh, tomorrow, if you're interested in a little bit more about microservices and evented and event source to microservices and putting those two things together, uh, we're doing one of the two hour afternoon sessions at uh, 1 10 p.m. in the purple room. So please join us if you'd like to know more details. So one of the subtitles or subtexts of this talk was, was about critical thinking. Um, and um, in the beginning, let's say, Back in the, in the beginning of, of DDD, when the book came out and we were all first, first reading it, I guess that's 2004-ish, um, what this really was for us was an instance of, of critical thinking. Uh, we were being told by vendors like Microsoft, Sun, IBM, a certain way to do things, and instinctually it felt a little bit uncomfortable. Um, there was some friction there, so we didn't just go with the program. Uh, we started looking around for answers. One of those answers, uh, or some of those answers, came uh, with, uh, with the DDD book, and, and, it, and it lit up uh, a lot of us and, and gave us a lot of energy and enthusiasm to, to um, uh, pursue um, um, a meta structure or design, a design ethos of, of, of building systems that, that wasn't as conflictual, that, that wasn't as, um, as uh, let's say, um, aggravating. Uh, as what we were um, being told to do and what the vendors were asking us to do uh, with the tooling that they were chipping. <clears throat> this is the intro to Jimmy Nilsson's book, um, uh, which was Domain Driven Design and Patterns, which came out, I think, back in 2006. So I was pretty uh, bullish on TDD at, around that point. I thought of myself as a, well, everybody was a blogger then because there was no Twitter. So we actually did long form writing um, and wrote a lot about uh, DDD and TDD and, and Agile. Uh, but the, the thing for me about all of this was that it reinforced what we already felt about design principles. Not merely aesthetically, not merely in terms of patterns, but about respecting design principles. It wasn't really just about adopting a new thing. There was no new thing. There was no community. We were looking for solutions. Um, and over the years, I've been a lot of things, but I don't think of myself as any one of these anymore, or never have really. Even though I've been kind of a, I've done all of these things and more, I would say, I would think, even though it's a, bit, a little bit self-indulgent, at a pretty high level. Uh, the focus remains on, on design principles and anything that allows us to, or at least doesn't get in the way of our use of our recognition of design principles and our implementations. Uh, because we recognized that design principles are pretty key to our ability to get work done. Over the years, my thinking and my stance has evolved on DDD. And I don't really necessarily feel the same way about it anymore, although I really can't say that I've rejected it and eliminated it. It's been integrated and assimilated into my being and it influences what I've done. Uh, but I've also over the years come to realize that everything that I learned and loved and was affected by TDD was already present and I already found all those things. I think of the four things for me that TDD are, they were already, they were already in the wild. Um, we ended up with new names for them at a specific point in, in our community history that allowed us to start to create an identity around it, though. So we're going to talk a lot more about that. But before we go on, um, I want to hand over uh, the stage now to my partner, Nathan, um, to talk about something that we're really excited about. Nathan? Thank you, Scott. I'm really excited to be here today. You know, it's, um, you know I'm here. You know, Scott can be very persuasive uh, when he's got incriminating pictures of you. Um, so I'm here. Um, and, you know, I, I, I guess I'll give a little bit about my background to get started. I, I got started in firmware. So around the time that DDD came out, I was, I was cutting my teeth 
uh, at a satellite radio company. We were trying to compete with Exim and Sirius. And I was very much kind of low level. I worked, I was the only person doing software or firmware, and I guess you could say I was sort of raised under the tutelage of hardware engineers. And I think that has definitely uh, uh, skewed or, or altered my course. And, and I got into software in 2008. And I've always been searching for that way of writing software that, that wins you some of the benefits that I saw in the hardware world. For instance, as a kind of an anecdote, uh, we found that we needed to really revise and make a lot of iterations on our antenna to make it uh, uh, download uh, uh, songs at the bit rate we wanted. Uh, so after we had built our entire firmware and baseband and analog stack, we were actually able to accelerate progress on iterating on our antenna because we had everything underneath you know, built out as modular components, integrated circuits. And I've been searching for the equivalent in software because uh, it seems like in software we always talk about accumulating technical debt. But I'm always looking for how can we start earning compound interest. Um, and, I think, and I think that's my, my principal motivation here. Uh, of course, I read DDD, I think, in 2011. I was really, you know, a lot of these patterns seem to bring that kind of industrial professionalism I saw in the hardware world. And, and a lot of those patterns, bounded context, event sourcing, CQRS, uh, over the years I've discovered that they are helping actually get towards that vision. We'll never be like hardware. We're always going to be fundamentally different. We're, we're a lot more variable. Uh, and the, the cost of mistakes is a lot different. But we're getting there. And so today, you know, specifically, I'm going to talk about the aggregate pattern because, and, and I'm, I'm so excited I get to do this because maybe once in your lifetime you get to make a major product announcement with a live audience like this. So I'm, I'm stoked. But I think what we're doing with the aggregate is finally getting us there, where we have truly modular systems built you know, on top of very easy to understand abstractions. So I want to talk about three things that typically make up an aggregate in our kind of, in, in our kind of uh, systems we work with, with Eventide. Uh, you know, you typically have to lug around three different classes in your pocket. Uh, you have an entity, and you have a projection, and you have a handler. Um, and you got to carry them with you everywhere you go. That entity, uh, uh, for those that, uh, I mean, this should be, this should be uh, second nature to a lot of folks, but I'm going to go over it anyway. An entity we kind of think of as our data structure. It contains the state of some, some business object. Uh, and it also it exposes methods that allow us to uh, operate that entity uh, without awareness of the underlying data structure. We, we have the other, the other primitive, a projection, where we take event, in event sourcing, we apply events towards our entity, to our entity. They, they copy fields, they accumulate. In the case of a, uh, bank accounts, we might we might uh, project deposits and withdrawals by uh, increasing or decreasing our balances, et cetera. That's how we arrive at our state. And of course, uh, if, we're, if, we're, if, we're, if we're taking a microservices approach to bounded context, we, we often have these command handlers that uh, accept commands from anywhere in the rest of the system, other bounded contexts, for instance. But there's a problem with this. It's so annoying to have to bounce around from file to file. We got these, we got these three different classes that all have to do with the aggregate, and we got to move around in between them all the time. And this costs us productivity, uh, I think. And, and, and we end up with three different test files for these three different classes. It's always been so awkward and cumbersome, I think, Scott. Um, so I guess I'll just jump into this. I'm, I'm just so excited about this. Um, We've introduced a, a new library, a, a first-class citizen of our toolkit called Aggregate. An aggregate is the combination of an entity, a projection, and a handler, all in one. And you can get this today. If you download, the, uh, all of you, I mean, I'm sure all of you use our toolkit, um, or will, uh, but you can have this right now. This is available right now. There's, there's, this is like now, all of a sudden, it's the home shopping network. It's no but additional cost. This is just something that works right now with your code. You can, you, you can, you can adopt it. You can have a very short migration path. So I didn't mean to cut in, but it's, it's exciting for both of us. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I get the same way. I'm just so enamored with it. Um, OK. So let's swipe over here and just give you an overview of the library. So here we go. Before I, I, I'm going to actually do a live release in front of the world, but I just wanted to give you some code preview. And 
I know a lot of people might be a little bit uh, offended by seeing Ruby. Um, please suspend that for the time being. Uh, so we have an account aggregate, and, and instead of having that entity projection and handler, we have a single cohesive entity, right? You know, I just, I just read about Solid the other day, so I'm pretty sure no one else has heard of it, um, but the most important letter is S, uh, single responsibility. It's also the one that's kind of easy for me to remember. Um, you know, this, this aggregate class has a single responsibility of being the aggregate. When we had the entity and the projection and the handler, each of them kind of epitomized only a third of, of the responsibility of being an aggregate. So this is three times better. Um, if you just do the numbers, it, 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 the numbers check out. So we got, we've got our entity data structure on top here with some methods. All right, we've got, it, we've got some command handlers. We've got some, the, these apply macros indicate we're projecting events. And uh, it's all in one, it's great. And, and really, you know, one more thing before, before we get into that, I want to show you some production code. Because I think that's where, it sh it, it's about showing the code, isn't it? Sure. You got to show the code. So, so here we are in a typical project today, before, before the invention of the aggregate. We've got our entity. It's an account. We can ask if it's opened or closed. We can deposit. We, we can withdraw. We have some affordances for item potents. We can check if there's sufficient funds, et cetera. Pretty simple. Um, we have... Let me look at the projection. Yeah. We have projections here. Again, this is a whole separate class. And if there's one thing I've learned over the years about programming, it's I hate having to go into a separate class for things. So we apply the events here. Look at all, look at this. It's just, it's, it's just, it's just projecting things. It's not doing anything meaningful. And of course, we've got our command handlers, you know, they, they include a check for item potence. They write a new message. They write an event that corresponds to the command. Great. And we'll go over this in great detail if you show up tomorrow and want to learn more about yeah. event sourcing and microservices. But look, this, this might have been a really good way to do it like five years ago. But now we have aggregates. And I want to show you what it looks like. And I, I just think this is personally beautiful. I, I like it so much. Um, when you put it all in the same class, it's all right there at your fingertips. We have all those helpful methods. We've got our handlers. We've got our uh, projections. It's great. It's all here. It's all right there. You know, it's the pr productivity wins you get are just incredible. And of course, you know, this is business software, and sometimes business software gets a little bloated. It's supposed to. So we have some best practices uh, for how to handle that. So we just use comment headers to indicate there's a section of this class for attributes. There's a section for command handlers. There's a section down the page for event projections. Oh, uh, and we got our methods down at the bottom. Perfect. And, you know, and, and that's what we're really finding with Eventide is these best practices are, uh, you know, when the community starts deciding this is the right way to do things, it just makes everybody not have to really think or make decisions. And, uh, and instead, you can focus on the domain, for instance. So, and I think this and, and several other best practices we're going to be uh, uh, releasing in an Eventide best practices book later. I think, you know, I think some... Sometime you, tomorrow, the, beginning, the beginning of next year. Yeah, our, our contact me afterwards if you want to get a discount our, um, code. And I yeah. think we're going to be yeah. uh, also uh, donating uh, some of the proceeds to... To um, our vacation fund. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, a good, good cause, good cause. So, yeah, what do you, I mean, what do you, what do you think about this? This is, this is, this is great stuff. You, you, guys, you guys like this? Is this, you excited? You're They're excited as excited the, as I am. The, it's exciting. This is a big, this is a big step, I think, for, yeah. for software development in general, really. So, I, I think without further ado, it's time to release this sucker. So, I'm just going to, I'm going to go back to the web browser here. And, and kind of, like, I'm just going to check, oh, look, there's a pull request. Okay, we can't, we oh. can't release this without... Did you do refactoring last uh, night? Yeah, but it's... it's Scott, sure. you were doing so well. I'm sorry. Why did you have to go and refactor this the I, night before we release it? I have it? commit rights, you know. Oh. oh. Okay, let me go in here. All right, dear Nathan, this is the most ill-conceived flagrant abdication. You know I'd heard about you. 
I had heard about you. Scott, I'm shocked. I, uh, uh, I'm embarrassed. Boop. <laughs> oh. All that said, this is an incredibly bad idea. And let's talk about why. But first, let's take a quick review into what we already know about software design and what we know about design principles and what their, um, what the, their raison d'être is. Um, and I had to work on that pronunciation. Um, the only reason we have design principles, computer doesn't care about them, it's for our own productivity. Violate them at the risk of your own productivity. And uh, let's just talk a little bit about what productivity is. Um, we think about this, or I tend to think about this, is the ability or the freedom to continue to make progress. Um, and we are trying to limit or eliminate setbacks, i.e. when you go to do your work, you are not distracted by other things that have nothing really intrinsically to do with your work, a.k.a. this is continuity. If you're ever looking for a good reason to justify refactoring within a sprint, well, first of all, you should justify not doing Scrum anymore. And then when you get there, you can justify all of these things through business continuity. If you can't get your work done, that's a business continuity problem. But Scott, when you I... You want to call it technical debt, that's fine. It's just a business continuity problem. I'm sorry. With these aggregates, I mean, I'm feeling more productive than ever before. I know. I, I know. I know. It's... <laughs> so, let's think about this as the pace at which we can make progress. And continuity is the ability to continue to make progress. With that in mind, let's talk about coupling and cohesion. Everybody loves a segment on coupling co cohesion at a, at a talk. Uh, no one appreciates more um, two talking heads talking at you about coupling and cohesion. Am I right? Excellent. So, cohesion. Nathan, in a little bit of tongue-in-cheek jest, was it tongue-in-cheek? I don't know, actually, no. I haven't really figured out what Nathan knows yet. Um, uh, talked about cohesion. But really what we're talking about is that everything in a class or module or a whatever or unit, whatever kind of programming paradigm you're using, uh, pertains to everything else. Uh, and the implication of this, typically, is that all the methods and attributes in a class are v invoked or somehow touched uh, when the class's single purpose is invoked. And uh, what that means is that classes do one thing. Well, Scott, I got my idea of what cohesion is. I like everything in the same file. You got your idea. What, what, what does it matter if it helps you learn and grow and it makes you feel productive? What's the big like deal? It, why would I get in the way of... Yeah. You know, well, you see, the thing is, Nathan, cohesion can be measured mathematically. It's just science. You can run a static analyzer of your code and tell you what cohesion is. It's not subject to opinions. Huh. It's okay. I, I'm not going to hug you again because I know this is not what you're comfortable with. The implication of this is classes do things. Uh, with a notable exception, that's data structures. And uh, if you want to talk about this in terms of DDD vocabulary, that would be uh, an entity. And we can say the entities be things. They are the, the being of things. They are the things. They're the data. They're not the doing of things. Even though they have operations on them, the operations per pertain to their, to their attributes. Um, they're really not uh, like the sort of uh, major business functions. So aside from entities, everything else is a doer. And doers do one thing. That sounds like functional programming. <laughs> I've heard that before from um, FP people who never really grokked OO and then pulled the ejection handle and went on to FP. It is a lot like that, but it's also a lot like OO. Uh, there's a notable exception that uh, if a class, a class can do more than one thing, but it's usually some variation or some, you want to call it an overload, uh, on the one thing. So let's talk about afferents and what that means here. Uh, and afferents, in terms of afferent coupling. Um, afferents is the coupling that happens to a module, class, unit, whichamajigger, whatever your programming paradigm has. Uh, it's the inbound coupling into something. And the more you have of it, the less you can change the thing that's got the high afferents. So you can look at this in terms of productivity or continuity or the ability to continue to make progress as the more afferents or uncontrolled afferents or just the more you don't pay attention to this, 
um, the more your productivity is going to track down. In fact, that continual productivity decrease that you usually see on, 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 uh, on projects is uh, not minimally affected by afferents in your system. And if you combine this with low cohesion, you're going to have even more loss of ability to continue make progress. As afferents increases, as cohesion decreases. And that's a simple thing. The more things that a class does, the more the other classes are going to couple to it to use it. That's afferents. Um, if you plot productivity on that, it's pretty much the same stuff. Um, productivity will sink as, um, as cohesion goes down. Afferents will increase as cohesion go goes down. So you can really think of your productivity, I mean, you can't really do this as, 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 through static analysis, um, not without a lot of data gathering. Um, but you can think of your productivity as, as an expression, your loss of productivity as an expression of the measure of afferents. Um, and, uh, and, and, and because I don't want to misrepresent that, there is a notable exception. Things at the edge, um, let's say a web controller, things that are not coupled to by much of anything else, um, have somewhat different rules or exceptional rules. Furthermore, continuity, productivity, ability to make progress is going to depend on clarity. Uh, and we'll think about that as knowledge at a glance. Not readability, scannability. Readability is kind of secondary. It's nice to have, but readability is not what user, what, what user interaction designers are after. User interaction designers are after um, optimizing for scannability and being able to look at something and know and to, as you're, as you're scanning through code, to gather knowledge without having to stop and read lines in detail and decipher. Scott, you're talking about these, all these things I've never heard of, which means I'm pretty sure that they're wrong. They're, yeah. Um, I mean, everything I believe in is based on rational, meticulously peer-reviewed and, and rig rigorously scrutinized publications and works. I mean, where, where are you coming from with this? Um, are you asking me to cite my sources? Cite your sources. Um, no. <sighs> well, you obviously don't know what you're talking about then. I inevitably can't know what I'm talking about if I'm not going to cite my sources. But I will say, Google design principles and make a focus of it. Uh, that sounds like an ad hominem. I know, it is. And, 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 and the litany of, of logical fallacies are at this point. At this point of this argument is when this starts to happen. I'm warning you, I know them all. So when we get into these debates in community, and this has happened, the reason why we are here today is because I had this debate on a DDESCQRS Slack channel, and it wasn't appreciated that I would not offer sources and said to the community, you are the community leaders of DDD gathered here. You should know this. You should be doing your research. Just Google it, um, which was well received. I was, uh, I was banned from the channel. That's a bit over the top. Yeah. I did not link, let me Google that for you. That's a great idea. <laughs> so all these, all these concepts here, these, these are all related to each other. Productivity, progress, continuity. These, all are, these, are, all, these are all sort of in the, same, in the same Venn diagram, in the same intersection. We're looking for clarity and certainty. Um, and your typical workday looks like this. You're given a task. You typically want to go to the work site, i.e. find out what it is that you need to change. You've got some finding to do before you can actually do some doing. Um, uh, in the ideal case, you know at a glance what, are, what the changes are uh, you're going to make, and it's immediately evident when you make those changes what the impacts uh, are going to be, and you have no expectations of unintended consequences. Um, and when you finished your work, you left it better than you had it. It's even more clear, right? Everybody has, this is everybody's work day, right? Everybody... Everybody does. I know this no, is coming. No, this, you'll get this. This is going to be in your future uh, as we, well. We've got to deliver features sometime. I, I, it's true. And, 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 and uh, uh, the thing is, we can argue this just based on continuity. But and I'm, we don't I'm known as the one that gets all the things done. And I'll just handle the design twaddle. Okay. Yeah. Why we're talking about clarity is because if you... Um, Increase afferents and uh, decrease cohesion, clarity gets worse. And when that happens, you stop sort of understanding what the single purpose 
of a module is. And when that happens, you add even more to it. And it starts accelerating. This is the fundamental law of working on anything. And this is the only thing, this is why I talk about interaction design a lot. This is why I suspended my career as a developer and went to work in an interaction design company. This matters. If you want to optimize for productivity, stop talking about readability, still achieve readability, and start looking at what we do in interaction design to achieve scannability or to achieve knowledge at a glance. So you want to be on the lookout for these things all the time. It's afference, cohesion, and clarity. These are the things that are going to predict whether or not you're making progress uh, at the pace that you wish you were. So let's get back to the aggregate. That's the point here, right? Uh, but first, here's a, a model class from a Rails project that's an one of the open source Rails projects that's, that's quite popular. It's a learning management system. And uh, you can't really see it all on the screen. So let's, uh, let's take a quick look at this, at this, uh, this code. This code is a scant uh, 3,000 lines uh, long. Um, it's the user object, user class. So of course, everything is coupled to it because, because we jump from the user to the everything else, and it has all the rules for everything. Also, talk to your doctor about turn it in. <laughs> Get this stuff. You know, it'd be funny if you sat around thinking up this crap, but I know it's just like, this is just <laughs> bouncing around your head. <laughs> uh. Right, so this, these are all the data relationships in this class. Here's, here's some queries that are on this class. This is Rails. Oh, you it's know, big, but look at all the code you didn't have to write. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all in one place, right? <laughs> There is somebody in the Rails community who once said, I want all my code in one place. I like it to be cohesive so it's all in one place, which is a diametric opposite of what cohesion means. Cohesion is not about opening one oh. file and having everything that you want in that one file. That's not what cohesion is at all. Mm. Cohesion means that the only things in the module or the unit of design, the only things that are in there pertain to each other. These things when you get a task to do, you've got to find your work site and you've got to understand at a glance what impact that change is going to make and what other things are going to change. Um, I, I bet, I, you know, you, you're going to have to depend on some really damn good complete tests for this class. <laughs> and, and I didn't bring the tests uh, because that was, I mean, it started triggering my PTSD. So, yeah, dumpster.rb. So let me, do, yeah, let me just speed through that. So, so you get the idea, right? This Rails model, as many are, if you follow the Rails way, which, by the way, has been duplicated and replicated and, and, and reproduced in many other environments. This has been copied by .NET, Java, Elixir, you name it, Scala, you name it. It's all over the place. This is kind of on the, on the, this is kind of on the awful side of the design quality spectrum. The aggregate isn't so far gone. The aggregate as a code pattern, the aggregate as an implementation artifact, that's not so far gone. But it's not exactly going in the direction of the good. It's not kind of, it's, it's heading is, is, uh, is not necessarily where you want it to be. But it's certainly by no means. I'm not saying, you do an aggregate, you're going to get this pile of rail stuff. Not necessarily. But you're not necessarily not doing that. And the question I have is, how did the DDD community miss this? Because this thing is in the DDD community. The, D the aggregate is in the DDD community. So I think in order to understand this, we should take a brief foray into this segment of the talk, which I call the secrets of consulting. Now. Consultants have audiences. Um, this is the social capital that we, that we turn into, um, into real capital. Sometimes it, it ebbs and flows and our audiences disappear and we've got to get them back. So we go from popularity, a little bit of decline, 
Our mechanism to get that audience back is to create some artificial scarcity, i.e., to introduce something that we know that you don't know so that you will fear that you don't know everything. And then we get popular again. And then we'll get a decline, and we'll introduce some arbitrary and artificial scarcity, and it goes on and on and on and on and on. And this is for you guys, and by the way, we're also doing, um, we have a seminar coming up on the secrets of consulting. Um, it's suspended right now, it's being done at Trump University, we're waiting to see the status on that. Unleash we don't really, we your don't potential. Really, indeed. Unleash it. Um, so, but we will share all of our consulting secrets, uh, but here's just a little bit of an excerpt. So, so when you get done with these, these cycles, you basically are trying to build your audience back up. And the key to this is to allow your customers to get close to the goal and then move the goal. And it, and it happens like this. Foos are the answer. Everybody learns what foos are. Now you don't need, need me to teach you or consult to you. So I'm going to invent something else. Bars are the answer. And when you learn that, I'll create some new scarcity. Um, in 2011, I was told, um, and I hadn't been paying attention to the DD community for a while, um, some folks got together and said that the aggregate pattern is now the way. The aggregate, not the aggregate concept, with the aggregate analysis pattern, but the analysis and the aggregate design pattern, i.e. putting a thing called aggregate in your code, was going to be the way things were done. I was away on a, an excursion at that time, um, and so I, I kind of I kind of missed it. Uh, but now this is blessed, uh, and I trip over this all the time in the real world. Uh, when we work with customers, uh, sometimes they'll say, "Hey, I've already got this implementation. Let me take a look at it." It's like, "Oh, here's the aggregate." And this is part of that cycle. We had something, that, some great thing that was the answer. We got a little bit of decline in interest because you learned, you don't really need the consultants anymore. And I think what we end up with is this new thing. Let's introduce an arbitrarily new thing. Aggregates are now the answer. But here's the rub. There's nothing that supersedes design principles. Nothing. DDD does not supersede design principles. DDD, first of all, is built on top of design principles. By the way, so is every other design methodology, including the ones that come before DDD, that DDD is informed by, and the ones that will come after DDD. And the reason to say this is, by the way, um, there's nothing new here. It's very well, very well cl clarified and written down um, in DDD and codified for a generation and for our time. So, back to critical thinking, where we started. What it's not. Why we got into DDD in the first place. We felt some friction, and we didn't accept the status quo. We didn't accept what everybody else was doing. Uh, we rejected it, and we isolated ourselves in our own tiny little enclave, and we, we pursued design principles, because those things <coughs> added up. The other stuff that we were being told about was illogical. And my proposition is that the presence of this pattern that's being adopted wildly without consideration of design principles, this aggregate thing that has low cohesion and high afference, which is an obvious violation of some of the most fundamental structural principles not only in software, but in the universe. By the way, your body works on that. This room works on that. The elevators work on that. Coffee works on that. It does, right? I don't drink coffee. Uh, coffee works on entirely different underlying principles. <laughs> Inevitably. Unfor unfortunately, I had to stop halfway through the hotel coffee, and I don't have the clarity of mind to fully describe it to you now. Not the best coffee. Oh, it's not. But, but it works. So... My concern is that DDD, 15 years on, has entered this phase of cargo culting. And where we started with an idea that was going to help us with our designs and to improve our productivity, because that's why we did this to begin with, has over time become a bunch of stuff that people are simply doing by rote. Uh, and actually, kind of, I mean, I, I know I did the things that I, I realize now. I know I did things in 2003 that I realize now are sort of immature. 
like having a class named repository, like having a class named, you know, specification. Putting pattern names in your code, pattern literalism. You think of patterns as, as exercises. They are the wax on, wax off, Daniel San, uh, of software. They're how you work out. But when you see pattern names in your code, that's a little bit more, it's good to get some practice, but as you get fluency with this stuff, the patterns disappear. Pattern names disappear. You'll find aggregates in our code. Not aggregate patterns, you'll find aggregates in our code. Why? Bounded context. Why? What is that? That's a microservice. It's called a partition in the old world. You'll find all that stuff. You'll find entities. you find all of these things because you'll find them in all good software design systems. But something happens when consultants get involved. And when we find our gimmick and we find our shtick and we find our way to make money and we're going to continually introduce new concepts. One of the things that Rails brought was this standardization of the project structure. It served nobody but the consultants who were hopping from project to project to project to project project, customer to customer, never going deep, always doing shallow work, but always looking to pop in and be a hero. Now would be a good time to let everyone know that uh, Scott actually is a consultant. Oh, um, yeah. And our race sheets are available, and we are doing office hours later. Standing we, in front of a stage, yeah, yeah. a captive audience. So, but our <laughs> consulting practice really is an addiction recovery service when you want to recover from the uh, consultants that, you, that you've sort of coupled yourselves to. Um, in an, in an, in a, we are afferent-resistant co uh, consultants. Uh, our consulting is good. Everyone else's is the problem. Yeah. You shouldn't take what I'm saying at face value. I mean, you know, we've been having some fun poking fun at this. It's a little bit, it's a little bit sleazy to do that, I suppose. Um, but, you know, in, 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 the, in the spirit of fun, we did a little head fake and we told you some things. But honestly, if you're going to be critical about this, you shouldn't take what I'm saying at face value. You should take a look at design principles. Yes, understand DDD and then understand all the things like it. But understand the things that sit atop all of this, the fundamental laws of physics that you can't ignore. And if you do ignore, find out why you're ignoring them and find out if there's folks, follow the money is what I'm saying. And don't be suckered. It's sometimes okay to suspend the, the, the laws of physics briefly. Um, but if you do it long term, there's going to be real ramifications. And I bet you, <sighs> It's a little bit arrogant to say, but I bet you you're experiencing it already, even in DDD projects, because DDD doesn't produce projects that don't fail. Designers do. Yeah, <laughs> designers do. Thinkers do. Critical thinkers do. When you feel something is a little bit off, follow that instinct. You know, I, I, don't, I, I kind of want to offer my kind of closing thoughts, too, which is... Um, oh, look, we're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Ten? Okay. Yeah, so for, for me, I've been a little bit of an outsider in the DDD community. I, I mean, I read the book and I, and I really enjoyed it. And what I've observed over the years is that, is that most teams I go, that, I, that I join up with have uh, one or a few DDD enthusiasts that are speaking this pattern language. And we have everybody else. And what I'm seeing an absence of is a diffusion of the principles and ideas from the DDD, DDD enthusiasts to the rest of the group. And I think what I, what I would like... You know, what would, what would make me happy about the future is seeing uh, the, these, these great ideas become more pervasive. The ideas and principles themselves become more pervasive and not, and not be another programming click. Um, that's just my thoughts, though. It would be unfair of us to offer all this uh, uh, potentially controversial stuff without allowing uh, commentary for anybody who rejects what we say and wants to push back against it. So we've got a few minutes. Um, don't. Don't hold back. <laughs> Nathan, why don't you feel this one? <laughs> Hi. Howdy. Hey, uh, I'm just a little confused. Do, are you saying that that example um, user monolith class is what the DDD aggregate pattern 
No, I'm trying not. I'm trying not to say that, and it was a bit of a foil, and and that's kind of why you know when we when well, I, it's on a spectrum. There's a spectrum. Yeah, that's why I try to present it on the spectrum, and 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 suggest that it's not as bad as that. Not that we've seen not yet, um, and it probably won't be that bad because because um, some of the members some of the members of a, of a of those aggregates are command handlers, and those are edge those are edge modules. So there's less effective afference to them. But I'm just sort of saying it's not exactly on the other side of the spectrum that where I think good over here, not so good over here. I don't think it's going, if it has a vector, if it has a direction that it's heading in, I don't think it's heading in the direction of, of yeah. a single responsibility, um, low afference, high cohesion. Yeah, the point is not that Rails models, big Rails models are bad and therefore aggregates are bad. The point. I think it's to illustrate a continuum yeah. where we, as we collect more and more behavior and, co and concerns on that one, yeah. on that yeah. one thing, we're on the same direction. And it's completely unfair to represent that rail. Yeah, no, that no. was manipulative, by the way, straight yeah. up. Well, that I'd, was I'd just like to offer that <clears throat> I think probably of the DDD tactical patterns, uh, aggregate has been the least well understood, as my book says. And um, You mean as an analysis pattern or as an implementation pattern? Because I don't... Well, really I think remember it as being an, turned into code as a single module. No, it's uh, aggregate pattern is very much a, a tactical coding technique. And so in order to clarify what Eric actually originally meant by the aggregate pattern, um, there were four rules of thumb put together. And the first two are you use an aggregate only to protect the true business invariance within a single transaction. So whatever must be constantly consistent and must be true at the end of a transaction should be within an aggregate. Mm -hmm. The second rule is design small aggregates. The third rule uh, doesn't necessarily, well, I think it actually does weigh into this heavily. Re reference other aggregates by ID only, which means, right, we're cutting. Yeah. No and, dot -referencing. and the fourth rule is for dependencies outside the transactional boundary where you can tolerate some time between updates is use eventual consistency mm -hmm. outside the aggregate boundary. So those four rules, I think, I mean, I want to say I compliment you on the fun of this talk because it's way more fun than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but I think maybe as a foundation, you're starting at the, at the assumption that because people misuse the pattern means that, it, that the pattern is invalid, whereas Eric, I believe, never meant for it to be used that way. I don't think Scrum is invalid as originally coined. I think that what's been done with it is invalid, and therefore it's invalid. At some point in time, I think, and it, my opinion, that... We go from the inception of something to the pervasiveness of something, and the definition of what it, what is, how it becomes pervasive is the definition. I think Agile no longer has a meaning, meaning beyond Scrum, for example, uh, whereas I think the original effectiveness of it was, was uh, encapsulated by XP. That's gone. Agile is Scrum. I've accepted that. DDD, uh, I think, has, still has value, but I also think that in practice, I mean, we trip over this all the time in our work. When we're working with customers who've, who've gone this way, who've taken certain trainings. And I'm, I'm, I know, I know I'm, feeling, I'm feeling my blood pressure rise. It's, my response to this is, is just raw rage to see this. Uh, to see the aggregate used in a way that basically is leading into this cargo culted, take a handler of projection, especially in the DDD, ES, CQRS side, which really we're focusing on here without really saying it, it's, it's all of these things being smashed together, and, I, and I, I'm never going to say I'm absolutely certain, but I'm fairly certain that this is an optimization for consulting engagements, and I don't think it's a helpful thing to be doing. And I know that it's not canon, and I know that it's a misrepresentation, but I would, I guess, in deference to you, love to see more dialogue in the DDD community about misuse and perhaps even about exploitation. Well, no one gets a chapter 10. 
<laughs> I know, just kidding, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Is that what you do? You read the first chapter and then you start It's all about the entity <laughs> and the repository and the value <laughs> object. And, and all right, let's, let's take more questions. Yeah, this is just a, a follow-up, I think, to, to Vern's point. I think, or, or Vaughn's point, sorry, Vaughn Vern's point. Um, I think what I've missed throughout this, and maybe I just skipped the, that part of reading the slide, but I, I think just in the clarity of your definition was the hard part. Because I think Vaughn pointed this out, like this is a commonly, you know, two people say the word aggregate, they mean very different things. And so it was hard for me to, to follow what definition or specifically where you were railing Yeah, and I'm against. coming from a particular subculture, a subset of the DDD, yeah. DDD community as well. So I was, I was just hoping maybe you could clarify that maybe it is the, the, the event sourcing uh, command query responsibility segregation area, or maybe it was just that there's this semantic diffusion of what this means, and that's the problem? There's inevitably a semantic diffusion, and I think it's subcultural. I think we've got, little, we've got sub-tribes now in DDD, and I think the ESCQRS side of things, the event sourcing and CQRS side of things, that this thing that I'm uh, pointing out uh, as something that I think is undesirable and harmful even, uh, that's where that lives. And that's where we live and work. Um, um, so it's really there. And if, and if you're not there, uh, then maybe this, this whole thing doesn't really pertain to, to, to your circumstances. Uh, yeah, and I, I mean, just hearing you know, the, the, the four criteria that Vaughn described, those are concepts I, get, I can get very, very much behind. Uh, for me, they don't, I don't see a code design that, that, that implements all of that as one class, and I think that was the, cent the, the central theme around the aggregate class. Pardon? Uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, sure, it would be, I think I, my feeling is that that would be a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. And it would be, uh, it would uh, ref respect um, uh, design principles. Um, but um, that's, in certain, in certain segments, certain populations, that's not what's happening. We've got two minutes, one more question. Sir? Um, so oh. you, I, oh yeah, over here, sorry. Uh, <laughs> one, I love where you're standing oh, right, right behind the light. Right, there we go. Right I, I, the light. I'm not going to see you. It's an interrogation, right? right? So, uh, there are four lights. There are four <laughs> lights. <laughs> yeah. um, you showed the aggregate, the, your project aggregate, and then you seem to argue against it. So I was wondering, is that a canard or is that an actual yes, thing? Yes, it's totally a canard. Okay. Just we <laughs> don't have an aggregate module. We'll never have an aggregate module. Just we didn't sure. release a Ruby gem called aggregate. Uh, it's, it's just a joke. Typically within a namespace, we'll have projections and, and command handlers and, and entities, and, and that namespace will be very much isolated. I mean, we won't, we won't jump into other namespaces. Um, and in fact, a lot of this stuff more, is more tactically relevant to the workshop and, and, and continuing discussion, but. Yeah, we'll, we will, I mean, a shameless plug, we will be going to this in, in, act, in yeah. real detail without the canard. Uh, obviously, the joke was a real success given how well it was understood. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can't wait till somebody's like, yeah, I tried to gem install your aggregate gem, and it did. We should put the gem out there. You know, it would be your hard drive. It would be it. ironic. <laughs> it would be ironic if we gave rise to an actual cargo cult where people mimic the code yeah. we put on the screen as a joke. Just, that would, that's very that, a, that's a the fitting. That, that's a fitting to end career. to you. <laughs> there was. <laughs> So put the gem out there. Rebecca's saying, uh, if, if, if you put it out there, uh, also say what not to do and why, and, and expound upon it, not just in, in take shots. What they have to download, not just what they have to download, too. And then see if people I think we should just install rootkits with it, frankly. I mean, <laughs> if you're going to go this far. There was one more. Is there, is there time to just, was it, was it short? I got what you're saying on the bad side. Uh, just briefly, what, uh, what's the good side? The good side, the good way to do this uh, is, is just, you know, respecting single responsibility and uh, cohesion. Um, a handler is a handler, a projection is a projection, an entity is an entity. Those are three things. That's it. It's that simple. And, and we do cover that quite a bit when, in, in the workshop. And our consulting. <laughs> cool. Thank you, Scott and Nathan. Cheers. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you having us. Ooh.